Good evening, everybody. I am honored to be here with my fellow entrepreneurs to talk with you about a little bit of my experience in helping bring, I'm essentially living the American dream, helping bring something into the world, a magazine for black women. The idea was conceived of in 1968. The first issue came out in May of 1970, and I was able to sell the magazine to a majority company, Time Inc., Time Warner. And so I wrote a book, or in the process of writing a book called The Man from Essence, and I wanted to talk about how I did this deal because I thought it could be instructive from the standpoint of a minority company being able to sell to a majority company. But in doing that and thinking about that, I also realized that I have to talk about the story of Essence and how that came about. And in the process, too, I have to talk about myself in bringing up a, a apart a business memoir. And in talking about myself, I was born in the Bronx in New York City. My mother was a beautician, school crossing guard, factory worker. My father was a janitor at City College. My stepfather was a delivery truck driver. That was my nuclear family. My mother was one of 14, born in rural Prince Edward County, Virginia. And my mother sent me to my grandparents' farm in Virginia from the time I was five until I was almost 15. And on my grandparents' farm of 110 acres of land, my grandmother truly believed with all her grandchildren that hard work killed nobody and proceeded to work all her grandchildren in every facet of housework, field work. She never made any distinctions about boys did this or girls did that. We had to do it all. So the inculcation of the work ethic was a part of my DNA. The importance of education was also a part of my DNA. And so being in Virginia, I went to public school, junior high school, high school. I was a pretty good football player. I got recruited to come from New York to the University of New Mexico. The only thing I knew about New Mexico then, this is 1958, was that the atomic bomb was built in Los Alamos and exploded in El Magordo. But I went 2,500 miles from New York to play football at the university. I only played for one year. I lost my scholarship, which was a blessing in disguise, which I did not realize, because of my political activism that took place, and I made some people feel uncomfortable. But I went on, I got a BA, MA degree in political science and international relations. I studied. Russian and Chinese history. I got accepted into Georgetown Law School and knew that I was on my way to being a lawyer, civil rights, corporate lawyer, except something happened. I flunked out of law school. <laughs> a monumental failure to me because I love going to school. My mother never had any problems about me going to school. And so I had to pick myself up, move on, and because of my relationship, with the Dean of Men at the University of New Mexico. He was able to facilitate a meeting for me at the then First National City Bank. And so I had this meeting, the bank hired me, and I was on my way to be a banker at First National City Bank. But then a very fateful opportunity came my way. I was invited with 25 other young blacks in 1968 to a meeting at the investment banking firm called Shearson and Hamill. Shearson's gone through a lot of changes doing, in terms of name changes, but the individual who brought us together was a black man who really wanted to get young blacks in the business. And this is against a backdrop in 1968 of Kennedy being killed, Dr. Martin Luther King was being, uh, died, we had the Vietnam War. There was a lot of desire to get young blacks in the business. And at this fateful meeting, November 8, 1968, the number two man at Shearson said, in talking about capitalism, why you want to think about getting into business, he said there must be a need for magazine for Negro women. And my former partner raised his hand and said, I've had an idea for magazine for Negro women. And the man who brought us together, the man I call the godfather of essence, said, there's Ed Lewis over there. 
he knows something about money. Why don't you two get together at the end of the meeting? And two other black men came together, and so there were four of us. And so you had four black men who did not know each other, who became equal partners, equally trying to run a business, and by the way, a prescription for disaster. But that's how we, we came together to celebrate the beauty, the intelligence, and aspirations of black women. In part, the other women's magazines, Good Housekeeping, Red Book, Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, permitted me to come into the marketplace because there was a void. They were not dealing with the aspirations of black women. And when you think about being an entrepreneur, you need to really differentiate yourself. You need to determine what someone else is not doing that you think you can do better. And by starting this magazine, the idea was conceived in 68. The first issue came out in May of 1970. And Essence still stands after all these years. And for me, thank you. Mm -hmm. For me, going back to Virginia, for example, and being a part of the family that I grew up in, I also realized that black women were not appreciated as workers, as mothers, and so the idea of being involved with a magazine that would celebrate her beauty was an appeal to me. In, additionally, in addition to that, as a political science major, I understood the importance within our society the power of the executive office, the legislature, the judiciary, and the press. And having something that you can call your own, and that's what I wanted black women to have, something that they can call their own. And in the process of growing the magazine, I've diversified, I tried other businesses, created magazines, bought magazines, I, I opened a business in, in the catalog business. I licensed the name on, on um, eyewear, lingerie, books. I did a television show. And more importantly, I also made a decision to do a music festival in New Orleans over the 4th of July weekend called the Essence Festival. This July, we just celebrated 20 years. And I would encourage all of you to come to the festival because you would see an extraordinary party with a purpose. One gets entertained in the evening at the Superdome, either Prince, Beyonce, you name it, we've had them all. And you get food for thought during the day. And this past July, 550,000 people came over the weekend and put $250 million into the economy. There is no magazine that I'm aware of, locally, nationally, or internationally, has that capability of bringing that number of people into one setting. And I also co-founded a magazine for Hispanic women called Latina. And together, I really thought that we, as a company, Essence Latina, would be an incredible marketing force. As a result of doing this kind of branding, how Essence was perceived, I was approached by Time Inc. in 2000 about the idea of investing in Essence we made a deal. I sold 49% of a company to Time in 2000. We had an agreement that we would sit down in 2005 to talk about where we go from there. They fortunately came to me in 2004 and said, we want to buy the remaining 51% of, of your company. I sold my company in 2005, and I continue to, to be blessed in terms of the opportunity that presented itself. Timing is the largest publishing company in the world. They know everything about publishing. They have incredible magazines from people in style, real simple, but they had a void in their marketplace too. Underserved market, black women. And that's what Essence came in to fulfill that void that was taking place. And so if, if I say to you in terms of budding entrepreneurs, if you have an idea, know that you're trying to do something different, being an entrepreneur, as Linda said, you have to be a little bit crazy in terms of having that kind of self-confidence uh, that one has to have, um, knowing that you also are going to have to hire the very best people uh, uh, that you can find. You're going to have to work harder than you've ever worked in your life. You're going to have to be able to share uh, the power and get behind your, the people that you 
that you've trusted to carry out their positions, and you have to take care of them too. And in the process, if I may just say this too, if there's nothing else you've heard from me about this evening, about being an entrepreneur, there's one thing to remember. For me, cash is king, queen, jack, and everything else. <laughs> and so I stand before you this evening on the backs of so many people, the loyal Essence staff, the, the eight million or so readers of Essence, um, my family that permit me to be here to say a few words to you. And I can recount to you a meeting I had with, a dinner I had with the then Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice in 2005. And she asked me, Ed, why did you, how did you get involved in starting a magazine for black women? And I said to her, before I tell you that, you and I are on the opposite end of the political spectrum. But having said that, you are a black woman, the Secretary of State. That is mind-boggling to me because in 1970, black women were thought of as uncouth, loudmouth, unfeminine, poor, on welfare, and can't read. And you are the Secretary of State. And of course today, we have a young lady by the name of Lapita, who is now considered one of the most beautiful black women in the world. We have Beyonce, one of the most influential. We have a woman by the name of Serena Williams, who in one day earned $4 million. And of course, we have Michelle Obama and her two kids in the White House. That brings great joy to me to know that what I hope bring into the world has, may have changed the perception about how black women are perceived. And more importantly, for black women, it's important for them to know that four black men came together to celebrate them, and I was able to get Time Warner to pay an extraordinary price that says to <laughs> black women that you are important, you matter, and you will continue to be a force, not only in this world economically, uh, but in the power equation that's taking place in our society. So the best of luck to all of you. Business is about taking risk. And take the risk, go with the flow, keep on going. Thank you.